Solar panels and wind turbines are great so long as the sun shines and the wind blows. Unfortunately, that isn't always the case. Our great energy transition, therefore, will need lots of energy storage. You may recently have seen some headlines saying that thermal energy storage is going to save the day. I wasn't terribly excited about those, but then I read about a project that does it with sulfur and they might be onto something. Let's have a look. Thermal storage is a way of storing energy by first using the energy to create heat and then later using this heat to create electricity. Some systems work instead by using energy to cool and then later using the cold substance to create electricity, but the principle is the same. A difference in temperature can be used to create electricity from it. The most common type of thermal storage uses molten salts. The big advantage over batteries is that it's simple and low effort, which makes it comparably cheap. According to some estimates, molten salt thermal storage is 30 times less expensive than lithium batteries while reaching a similar efficiency that's well above 90%. The major problem with this thermal storage is that the heat inevitably leaks, so the longer you want to store the energy, the more you lose. Molten salts are good for a few hours up to a few days or a week at most and this is why I haven't been terribly excited about them. It's a good idea to ease out day-to-day -day fluctuations but they won't fix the much bigger problem with renewable energies which are extended phases of little sunshine and wind known as Dunkelflaute that can last up to two weeks. But we have a newcomer to thermal energy storage which is literally hot in the sense that it works at temperatures exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. The idea is to add a chemical loop to the thermal storage. It's then called thermochemical energy storage. This has been around for some while, but a group from the German Aerospace Center added another twist to it. They store the energy in a stable compound, sulfur, which can last pretty much indefinitely. Basically, you use solar energy to create heat and that heat is used to perform a chemical reaction that requires energy. You store the reaction products and if you need the energy again, you let the products react and get the energy back. Concretely, their cycle uses sulfuric acid. With the heat derived from solar energy, you can split off sulfur and water. You collect the sulfur and if you need the energy back, you burn it. It's kind of like storing energy in hydrogen, except that sulfur is a powder. It's easier to store and handle. While it's not exactly tasty, sulfur itself is of low toxicity, though several of the reaction products are highly toxic and highly corrosive. They say that the process is also more efficient than solar to hydrogen, which has a very low efficiency, dangling around 15 to 20 percent. According to some estimates, the sulfur cycle could theoretically reach 26 percent, but there are few studies and in practice the numbers might be lower. It's also important to note is that this isn't a type of storage that you can use with your average solar power plant or wind turbine. Like most ideas to produce hydrogen from solar, it works with concentrated sunlight. That's when you use a collection of mirrors to focus the sunlight in one spot where it then gets really hot. This extreme heat is needed to get the sulfur cycle going. That isn't to say that I'm somehow against it, it's just that I don't think it's quite the game changer that the head lines make it out to be. What we'd really need is an efficient way to store the energy of the already existing solar and wind areas. You see similar headlines popping up every once in a while, like this recent one in the New York Times that mentions a few other newcomers. Like for example the company Energy Dome based in Milan that fills a huge balloon with carbon dioxide. During the day solar energy compresses the carbon dioxide until it becomes liquid. At night the liquid carbon dioxide expands back into gas which drives the turbine and produces electricity that's sent back to the grid. Or a recent study from Eindhoven University in the Netherlands that says that iron can be rusted and unrusted to store energy and later release it. I could go on for days listing different ideas for how to store energy but the kids will be back from school in about 10 minutes so let me wrap this up. These types of storage all have different
different pros and cons in terms of how long they last or how efficient they are, etc. But at the moment, none of them is both efficient and versatile enough to solve the problem with intermittent energy. If only we had a reliable way to generate energy without carbon emissions like this thing, what was it called? Fluclea, nuclear... Earlier this year, we saw a wave of famous YouTubers quitting. And, you know, I get it. It can be difficult to balance your creative aspirations with the management and with whatever's left of your personal life. But I found both advice and support on Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes by and for creators. They cover specific disciplines such as film and design, but also general topics such as freelancing and productivity in general. To help you get started, Skillshare offers learning paths to gradually build your knowledge from beginner to expert, like this one on creative productivity, kickstart and sustain any project. It's a great course from people with experience in a number number of different professions, including video creation. It has tons of practical advice for how to reliably come up with new ideas, how to become better at time management, and how to break down big projects into manageable chunks. This course has really decreased my stress levels. If you're looking to start something new or expand your creative skills, Skillshare is the best place to start. But if you go there, make sure to use our link, because the first 500 of you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so go and check it out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.